Welcome to Course 1, Unit 1, Lesson 3, What is a Balance Sheet and Margin of Safety? In this lesson, we have four lesson objectives. The first is to understand the importance of a balance sheet. The second is how do you determine the equity of a business? The third is understand a company's margin of safety. And the fourth is business value, a comparison of net income and equity. So let's get started. Uh, let me warn you that if you're starting this lesson out without seeing lesson two, you're probably going to be a little bit behind. So I'm, I'm recommending that you go back and view the course one, unit one, lesson two uh, video before jumping into this lesson three. Okay, so where we left off in lesson two was that we had a small business owner who whose name was Nancy. You can see her there at the top. Um, and she had this small ice cream business. And the ice cream business had $100,000 in revenue. And as it went through all the different um, cost, she eventually ended up with $20,000 of net income or earnings. And we, we know that, that that term, net income and earnings, is a very important figure to understand because that's the amount of money that's left after the entire business model. And Nancy had two options. She could keep that money for herself, she could pay herself, or she could put the money back into the business. We had talked about in the, in the previous lesson what Nancy's business was worth. So let's assume that Nancy wants to sell her business. She, she doesn't want to own it anymore and she wants to sell it. And she's asking uh, $200,000 for somebody to buy it. So that, that's her market price. Whenever a person sets that price, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get $200,000 for the ice cream stand, but that's what she's asking for. We, we realize that whenever she's making $20,000 in net income that you'd have a 10% return if she's asking for $200,000 for the business. But how safe is that investment? That's really the question that we've got to understand at this point to go forward. So off to the balance sheet is where we're going to have to figure that out. Any business, any corporation, um, has three pieces of paper that they have to account for all, all the things that their business operates. The first one's the income statement, the next one's the balance sheet, and the third one is the cash flow statement. And I have a little square there representing each one of these documents. So for Nancy's business, she has an income statement. Now, if you look below the income statement, you see the little model uh, that we used from lesson two below that, because that's what we were doing. We were figuring out essentially what her income statement was. It starts at the, at the top of that income statement is the total revenue, and the bottom line figure at the bottom of that document of the income statement is the net income. So we pretty much already understand the income statement, and that's used to find what the company's profit's going to be. Now, something that we haven't talked about is the next one, which is the balance sheet. And if you look in the middle there, there's the balance sheet. And we can use the balance sheet to determine the margin of safety that you would get if you were to purchase this business from Nancy, who's asking $200,000 for her business. Just, just so you know, the cash flow statement is something that we're not going to cover until course two of the overall courses that the website teaches. So don't worry about the cash flow statement right now. I just really want to focus on the two documents there, the income statement and the balance sheet. You absolutely have to know all three of these documents. That is something that as a, as a stock investor, you are going to have to become very familiar with all three of these documents. So th there's only three of them. You need to commit those to memory. So just remember that the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. If you're taking notes, I would definitely write those three documents down. So what we're going to focus on right now is the balance sheet, and this is used to determine our margin of safety, among some other things too. So what is the balance sheet? The best way to understand what the balance sheet is, is to ask yourself this question. What would happen if the business would liquidate right now? Okay, now I use the fancy term there, liquidate, but all that, all liquidate means is that you're going to basically turn the entire company into cash, meaning you're going to end it, you're going to kill it. That's another word for liquidate, is that you're going to kill the business. If she was going to liquidate her business, what is it worth right now? Not 10 days from now, not 10 days ago, it's right now. That's how you have to look at that that estimate. So um, in order to do that, you have to basically sum up all of your assets, sum up all of your liabilities, and then the difference when you, you when you subtract the liabilities from the assets is your equity. So let's uh, demonstrate that. So here, what I did is I just took a very generic uh, balance sheet for Nancy's business, her ice cream business. And when on the top, you can see I have the total assets. Okay, so I'm going to go through these real quickly. Um, the cash in the account. So she, Nancy has a corporate bank account that's different than her personal bank account. And in that bank account, she has $3,000 on hand. Her ice cream stand, let's just say the ice cream stand is worth $10,000. Let's say the ice cream machine, let's say she has a real fancy ice cream machine inside and it's worth $5,000. 
Um, the supplies that she has on hand right now is a thousand, and the land that she bought to put her little ice cream stand on is twenty-five thousand dollars. So when we sum up those assets, it's forty-four thousand dollars. So now let's look down at the total liabilities. So the first thing we see is the salary owed to her employee of two thousand dollars. So she has to pay that out. She hasn't paid her yet. The next thing is the ice cream stand itself. Now you'll notice that I listed the ice cream stand up in the assets and I also listed the ice cream stand in the liabilities. On the top it's, it's $10,000, on the bottom it's $9,000. The reason that the, the ice cream stand is listed twice is because she hasn't paid for the ice cream stand. So although the ice cream stand is worth $10,000, she's only paid off a thousand of it so she only owns $1,000 of that ice cream stand. The other $9,000 she either owes to the bank or whoever lent her the money in order to buy it. So we just learned something about Nancy's ice cream stand here is that she doesn't necessarily own that, that stand itself. She only owns $1,000 of it, of the whole $10,000 worth of the, of the ice cream stand. So then we look at the ice cream machine and we have the same exact thing. The machine might be worth $5,000, but $3,000 of that is still debt because Nancy doesn't own the ice cream machine. She took out a loan in order to buy it. So she owns $2,000 of the $5,000. Okay, and then we look at the land. So she would have bought that plot of land for, and the land is worth $25,000 is what she's listing it for. But she still owes $23,000 on that land. So she's only paid off $2,000 on that land. So when we sum up all of her liabilities, we see that Nancy owes $37,000 on this ice cream stand. So when what we got to do is we just take the assets, we take those total assets, we subtract the total liabilities, and we see that Nancy's equity in this business, and the equity is just the difference between those two, is $7,000. So this sheds a whole lot of light on Nancy's ice cream stand. You know, it might be making $20,000 a year in profit, but the only thing it's worth on the books right now, which is her balance sheet, and if you look up in the top left there, the balance sheet, the equity is only $7,000 on this business. So in order to get a better idea of a balance sheet, I, I often encourage people to, to sit down and try to determine their own equity with a balance sheet. You know, sit down with a blank piece of paper and write down all your assets, you know, write down how much you have in cash in your bank account, write down how much you think your car is worth right now, and, and you have to say what it's worth now, not what you bought it for, um, how much you think your house is worth, and then go down to the liabilities and then start listing how much do you have in credit card debt, how much is your loan uh, for on your house, how much is your car loan still and, and list all those things and then what you do is you just add up your assets, subtract your liabilities and see what your personal equity is and when you do that you're really going to have a better idea of what a balance sheet actually is because you've done it firsthand. Okay and something one final thing I want to highlight here is you look up on that balance sheet in the top left um, the equity is for the whole business when you value the entire business. When we start talking about shares, one share the, the terminology that's equivalent to, to equity is book value. So whenever I, if, if I slip up and say book value, I'm actually saying equity, but book value is per share. That's equity per share. Okay, so now we're going to look at here. If, if Nancy couldn't find a buyer for her, for her uh, ice cream stand, how much is her business worth? Okay, we said that, you know, if, if we valued it at $200,000, it's going to give her, it's going to give her, or the person who would buy it a 10% return. But if no one's willing to buy it for that, how much is it really worth? If she just wanted to end this business and she couldn't sell it to anybody, how much is she going to get? And the answer is her equity. She's going to get $7,000 for this business. So you saw a business that went from, you know, her trying to sell it for maybe $200,000, but if she can't find a buyer and she just wants to kill the business and sell her ice cream machine and pay off her debts and all that, she's only going to have $7,000 left at, at the end of the day. So this difference between what the market price of what a person's asking for and the actual equity that's sitting in the company, that difference is the risk. That's the margin of safety. And this was Benjamin Graham's big thing, which we learned was Warren Buffett's professor at Columbia. His big thing was margin of safety. If a, if a business didn't have a, a substantial amount of safety between what the market price was and what the equity was, 
he was very hesitant to ever buy a company. So like in this scenario, the, the equity is actually three and a half percent of what the market price is. And, you know, that, that's no that's no safety at all, because let's say you'd buy this business for two hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you bought it. OK, there you are with your ice cream stand and it's it's making that that net income that you saw, which was twenty thousand dollars. And as it's making that, all of a sudden your employee quits and sales start decreasing and all of a sudden you're not making money anymore and you have to sell the business. What is the business worth? Well, it's worth the equity. So there you are. That, there, that's all the risk that's wrapped up into this company is that difference between the market price of what you buy it for and how much the equity is for the company on its balance sheet. And as you can see, the closer the equity is to the market price, the, the safer the investment. So as we look at this slide right here, I, I laid out the two things. We've already talked about the income statement. That's what we learned in lesson two. And now you see the balance sheet, which we learned about in this lesson. So the net income off of the income statement was $20,000 a year. Therefore, if you're buying that business for $200,000, you can expect a return of 10% on your money. But that's only if the business operates like it's supposed to. That's, that's if all the customers keep coming. That's if all your employees don't quit or change. That's if your ice cream machines never break or you're, you, know, you don't run into any issues. You don't have any lawsuits, any of that stuff. Okay, That's what the business would be worth. But as we go over there and we look at the balance sheet and the equity is only $7,000 that is that is a lot of risk that you have and so the margin of safety is really low on this investment the equity is 3.5 percent of the market price so you you're looking for something that would have equity you know if, if the equity in the business was hundred and fifty thousand dollars and your net income was twenty thousand dollars you'd probably have a very easy time you know asking two hundred thousand dollars for the business but in this case, I think she's going to be have a very hard time finding a buyer at $200,000 when there's only $7,000 of equity in the business. Okay, so I'm going to quickly jump ahead. Um, the, the thing I really wanted you to get out of this was understanding what the term equity was and also understanding what margin of safety was. So if you got that out of this lesson, that's what we're really shooting for. I'm just going to give you kind of a glimpse of what's to come ahead here. So if this confuses you, don't worry about it. Just go to the next lesson and you should be fine. Okay, so if you remember from lesson two, I and I want you to look at the twenty thousand dollars in net income. I told you that the owner has the option to do two things: they can either pay themselves or they can put that money back into the business. And if she pays herself, that's a dividend when you're dealing with stocks. And when you put that back into the business, I said that it could potentially be retained as earnings. So when we look at this, I put the balance sheet off to the right hand side there. Let's assume that Nancy took that $20,000 and she was putting it back into the business opposed to paying herself. You would actually see her equity, hopefully, if she's making wise decisions by paying off her debt at this point based off her balance sheet. You would see that her equity would increase by that $20,000 if she's making payments straight to her, to her debts. So that's what you'd like to see. So did her earning power increase by very much? Maybe a little bit because she might have made some wise investments and maybe a new machine or whatever. But generally speaking, she's probably going to still be making about $20,000 a year. But what did change is that her equity would have probably gone from $7,000 up to $27,000 if she put all of it in there through one year's period. So what would she, what she would have done is she would have reduced her, her risk. She would have increased her margin of safety because her equity would have increased in the business. But her net income would probably still be generally close to the same. So that's something to kind of look at. And if you didn't understand that, that's fine. You're going to get plenty more uh, as we go along. So that's just something to think about as, as we're looking at this scenario very early on. We can already start to see how some of this stuff is going to be playing out. So. The four things that we learned in this uh, lesson, we learned about understanding the importance of a balance sheet, and we understood how to determine the equity of a business. Um, we understand the company's margin of safety, and we understand the business value in comparison of the net income to the equity. So I hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.